we all associate a drop in oil pressure with worn bearings, worn shells, worn crankshaft and so on. But in this video I just want to illustrate for you how you can suffer a dramatic drop in oil pressure using <laughs> um, because of um, other circumstances. <clears throat> the engine that we were concerned about was a 3LW and unfortunately in some ways we've already shipped that engine so I'm actually having to put this YouTube together retrospectively using short clips and, and uh, photographs that I took at the time. So I know it's not ideal but I think you'll still get something out of it. So having said that let's go now and take a look at the engine. Now this is the general side view of the engine. Nothing extraordinary there. Um, but if we take a closer look, you'll see some peculiar things. You'll see that the throttle control is fixed. The advanced and retard is fixed. There's no controlling rod there. And that's really quite a heavy flywheel. Um, it's unusual to see the flywheel of a larger diameter, larger than the starting ring. Um, so we can conclude from this that this was um, most likely to be a, a, gen, a gen set. If we take a look at the flywheel itself on the end, you can see a coupling there, and that would have been coupled up directly to an alternator of some sort. Um, I know for a fact that this engine came from the Isle of Wight, and it could well have been used in a lighthouse there. I'm not. I'm not sure. We believe that this engine is actually in very good condition. And there's a number of pointers here towards that. Uh, first of all, the heads are very clean. They don't show any staining with oil or, or um, tightling of unions or anything like that. They really look really quite new. Um, also, the exhaust is a giveaway. The exhaust is very clean. There's no carbon deposits there at all. This engine uh, has been overhauled uh, really quite recently. It's in very, very good condition. But whoever it was that restored the engine committed a clangor. There's a pipe which runs up to feed the rockers there at the aft end of the head. And they've over tightened the union there and cracked the head. Now, I don't have uh, a graphic to show you the initial crack. Uh, we got a professional welder uh, to weld it all up so there'll be no leaks there. But this left us with a problem. With the oil feed at the rear of the head closed off by the weld, um, how were we going to get oil to the rockers? Our solution was very simple. We made up a, a copper pipe and fed it to the other end of the head. Here you can see how we brought the copper pipe round to the front of the head. So we want to start up the engine. Um, but oh dear, look what happens. Very low oil pressure. It should normally be 45 PSI. So it's obvious that the rockers are getting too much oil. Our copper pipe is just in too large a dam. Oh dear, look what's happening at the rockers. So our solution was very simple. We just crimped the copper pipe a little bit and that reduced the flow. Now with the engine running and up the temperature, you can see that the oil pressure is as it should be. Uh, final adjustments can be made, of course, at the oil pressure release valve in the normal way. Here we have an original steel pipe from a 5LW. As you can see, it's got two limbs because there's two heads. On the 3LW, we've only got one head. So our objective is to feed oil from somewhere about here up through this pipe and up to the front head. That's what we had to do with this uh, uh, damaged engine. So it's not a difficult process. We used copper, um, but the 
the customer who's bought this engine, he assures me that he's going to do it in steel with a fine bore pipe. And if need be, he can use an off the shelf reducer to reduce the pressure and hence the feed of oil to the rockers. So there you have it. I hope you found that of interest and I hope you found it um, <laughs> dramatic. Certainly I found it dramatic and I laughed quite a lot whenever I seen the oil squirting up from the rockers. Um, we're learning all the time. Thank you so much.